Good morning, friends. This is Steve from Southern Illinois again. It's been a beautiful week down here this week. Cool, as in cold. I've been running the fireplace, uh, but sunny. Kitchen, recent new private key. And redirect DNS. And we got it. Yes. I broke into Steve's live feed. This is so much fun. Don't worry. Okay. See, here's the deal. Steve told me anytime I had a few thoughts to say, to just say them. So he, he just doesn't know I broke into his feed today and I'm sending it. Oh, this is great. Great. This is great. Great. He, no, he's not going to be upset at all. It's all going to be good. Look, look, here's the deal. Let me explain this. So Steve has like oodles of friends on Facebook and I, I just have a handful and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm kind of a private guy in a way. All is good. But this past week I had a few things happen that I thought would be a good thing to share. And well, I decided to share them. So here we go. This past week, I had a decision to make. Me and my wife actually had a decision to make. We had to put our 15-year-old dog down. Okay, She has been part of our family uh, practically ever since we've been married, and uh, which is now over 15 years. And she has been a great dog and, and has loved... Uh, loved in going with us. We were camping. We would go and do things together. She has been a great part of the family. But unfortunately, we had to put her down this past week. She has gotten a lot of sores. She has a lot of different issues, health issues, and it was just the time was right. And to compound things even more, I had a friend this past week that, co-worker, that passed away from COVID. And, you know, I work at a hospital. You know, those things are going to happen at this time, as I'm sure many of you have also lost loved ones at this time due to COVID. And it's just another challenge that, that we face each day uh, here on Earth. But it made me think back of my grandfather. My grandfather passed away a few years ago, okay? And he was a minister. Praise the Lord, bless his heart. He was a pastor his whole life. And he was giving Bible studies up until a few days before he passed away. And he also had several medical issues at the end of his life and complexities there. But before he passed away, a few years before that, I spoke with him one of his birthdays. He was like 90-something, okay? He was old. I called him up one time and I says, Grandpa, I said, well, one thing would you want someone else to know at your funeral? And you got to understand, Adventist pastors, okay? So if you ever go to an Adventist funeral, most likely there's going to be two subjects, if not both, brought up at the funeral, okay? One is doctrinal teaching about the state of the dead, what happens when you die, or, and, a doctrinal teaching about end time events. Okay, now both those, you know, are uh, are things good things to bring up, especially if you're an Adventist. You know, you have a lot of people there, and you want to express your some of your your ministry to others, especially being a pastor. I could see that. So I was expecting from like, you know what, Bobby, I want them to know that they're going to be in heaven soon with their loved ones. No, he says, Bobby. I want people to know that Jesus loves them. Wow. Th that set me back. That really was a reset. Set me back to hear that. <clears throat> you know, Steve last week <clears throat> talked about the shoebox, you know, and how you know, is kind of a way of visualizing what are our tools we have. Well, this, I feel, is in my shoebox. This is something that for me is meaningful. Right now, we have a lot of things in this world going on. You know, 
We have anything from um, issues at work, coworkers, friends, that all of a sudden may say something, they might frustrate us, they have a different political viewpoint, okay? Um, there's a lot of turmoil that goes on and challenges. And I have to reset. I have to go back. I have to go back to that shoebox that my grandfather told me. Jesus loves them. You know, there is Democrat, Republican. There is a lot of polarized differences there. And whether it is black and white, citizen, immigrant, or uh, illegals, there's a lot of different separation there between us. And, you know, I think of some of the stories that Jesus gave us. You know, how when Jesus was hanging on the cross, and this we found in Matthew, by the way. Oh, sorry, in Luke 23, 26 to 38, if you want to read it. When Jesus is hanging on the cross, they're dividing his garments. I remember reading this when I was younger. And Jesus says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I thought... That was referring to those dividing the garments. But someone in the Bible said, brought to my attention, Bobby, reread that. And I did. I reread that. And I realized it's not just them. It's everyone there. Okay? Those that put them on the cross. And those that, you know, that were opposed to him. That wanted him crucified. Those in the crowd. Everyone. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Wow. What love is that? You know, there's a lot of those challenges, like I mentioned, you know, of the black and white, of the who's a citizen, who's not, who's an immigrant, who's illegal, Republican, Democrat. We, we want to almost make an enemy. Now I know, I know what you're saying. No, Bobby, I don't want to make enemies, and I don't either. Trust me, I don't want to have any enemies. But we end up making them, unfortunately. What do we want to or not? Because we have different viewpoints than they do. We have this challenge where we feel like they've done us wrong. We feel like their direction they're going is wrong. And they're creating a problem for us. Well, whether they are or not, Jesus loves them. Wow. What can, that, what can that do for me? What does that mean for me? In Matthew 5, 44, Jesus talks about we need to even love our enemies. Forgive those that even do us wrong. That's not easy, you know. But whether we're a Christian or not a Christian, you know, you think about it. All we really want is to be treated with love and respect. And most of the times when we're not, that's why we build up those walls. That's why we create the enemies. But let's think about this here for a minute. We're supposed to love our enemies then we need to love our enemies. You know, that's a powerful statement. And it connects with what my grandfather said and his, his message that he wanted to present. Jesus loves them. It means Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even those that are against us. You know, with all my sins I have, and I want people to respect me and to love me, the least I can do is to love and respect them, even with their faults. And really, guys, that's all I have for today. That's my little, my shoebox story of what's in my shoebox of tools in my life. I pull that out, think back to my grandfather. Jesus loves them too. So, I'm going to send you back here to Steve. I'm going to disconnect back out of this feed, this live feed. I'm going to now put it back to Steve's feed. I'll let him finish wherever he is. 
take off wherever he is and hopefully he'll never even know this happened here we go okay re-enable encryption reset the dns and disable the flux capacitor got it people that we consider immoral Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, look up and have a good week.